Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture series on thermodynamics. Today our topic is indicator diagram commonly known as PV diagram. We are familiar with displacement time ST and velocity time VT graphs which are used in mechanics. Now in thermodynamics in order to study a thermodynamic system we use a pressure volume graph which we call it as PV graph or indicator diagram. This graph indicates how pressure P of a system varies with its volume V during a thermodynamic process and is also known as indicator diagram. A pressure volume diagram or PV diagram is used to describe the corresponding changes in volume and pressure of a system. These PV diagrams originally called indicator diagrams were developed by James Watt and his employee John Southern in 18th century as tools for understanding the efficiency of steam engines. They are also used in thermodynamics, cardiovascular physiology and respiratory physiology. Now we will see how to represent a PV diagram. Generally, a PV diagram is plotted by taking volume on the vertical, volume on the horizontal axis, that is x-axis, and pressure on the vertical axis, that is y-axis. So a PV diagram is plotted by taking volume on x-axis and pressure on the y-axis. Every point on the PV diagram represents a different state of the gas. Of course, this is the initial state A, represented by A, and this is the final state represented by B in this figure. This PV diagram is very convenient to visualize the changes in pressure and volume in each and every state. That is, we can find the pressure and volume at any state. Suppose if we want the pressure and volume at this state, if we extend a line towards this axis, we will get the pressure. And if we extend a line, we will get the volume. So this is the way of representing the PV diagram. Now we will see how to analyze a PV diagram. So suppose if we are given a graph like this, that is volume is taken on x-axis and pressure is taken on y-axis. This we call it as PV diagram. Suppose if we are given like this, then we can see this is the initial state of the gas, which is represented by P1, V1, A, P1, V1. P1 is the initial pressure and V1 is the initial volume. And this is the final state of the gas or a system represented by P. Pressure is P2, volume is V2. So from this graph, we can find out the initial state and the final state. Not only the initial and final state, we can find the state of the system at any point on the indicator diagram. That is, we can find the coordinates at any point on the graph. Also, we can see the direction in which the process is taking place. It is taking place in the forward direction. When it is taking place in the forward direction, it indicates that the volume is increasing from V1 to V2. When the volume is increasing from V1 to V2, we can conclude that this is an expansion process. This is an expansion process. Also, we can calculate the work done in this process. So if we are given a graph like this, we can identify the initial and final states. We can also find out the different states of the gas. We can also say whether it is an expansion process or compression process. We can also calculate the work done in the process. Similarly, let us take another curve. In this, we can see here also the volume is taken on x-axis and pressure P is taken on y-axis. Here you can notice that the process is taking place in this direction. This happens to be the initial state and this happens to be the final state. So this process is taking place in the reverse direction. That is, volume is decreasing. It is decreasing from Vt to V1. When the volume decreases, we can conclude that this is a compression process. Also, we can calculate the work done. The area under the PV diagram gives the work done in any process. So 
in order to analyze a pv diagram we can have all these points into consideration here also we can calculate the work done for the calculating the work done we can take these points for a small change in volume dv we can calculate the work done as w is equal to p into p p into dv where p represents the pressure and dv represents the volume so this is the way of analyzing a pv diagram now let's see some of the applications of pv diagrams when once we are able to decode the information which is present in a pv diagram we can decipher the hidden information contained in the pv diagram that is with the help of a pv diagram one can easily find out the work done delta w on a gas that is the magnitude of work done can be calculated we can also determine the sign of the work done we can also find the change in internal energy delta u and we can also find out the sign of delta q that is heat transferred in a system these are the applications of pv diagram now let's see one by one now let's see how to calculate the work done using a pv diagram so we have already understood a pv diagram is plotted by taking pressure on y axis and volume on x axis now if we want to calculate the work done let's take a gas which is in the process of expansion here p1 v1 represents the initial state of the gas and p2 v2 represents the final state of the gas that is p1 is the initial pressure p2 is the final pressure v1 is the initial volume v2 is the final volume the gas is proceeding like this that means the volume is expanding from v1 to v2 hence we call this as an expansion process now let us try to calculate the work done in this process now in order to calculate the work done in the beginning let's calculate the small work done by the system as w delta w for this if p represents the pressure at the start then delta v is the very small change in volume delta v is the very small change in the volume so then the work done is given by delta w is equal to p into delta v pictorially it can be represented as the area of the shaded strip a b c d so area of shaded strip a b c d represents the small amount of work done when there is a small change in volume delta v at this at the state where the pressure is p now if you want to calculate the total work done in this process of expansion then the total work will be equal to the area under this curve so the total work done by the system when it expands from v1 to v2 is equal to area of p1 p2 v2 v1 p1 this area depends on the shape of the indicator diagram of, of course it doesn't matter what shape does the path takes place the area under the curve will still represent the work done for any curved path we can imagine the area into small num very number of rectangles rectangles the area of each rectangle will be will represent the work done during each infinitesimal step and the sum of the areas would represent the total work done for the entire process so by using a pv diagram we can conveniently calculate the total work done in a process whether it is an expansion process or whether it is a compression process now let's see how we can determine the sign of work done from a pv diagram previously we have calculated the magnitude of work done now we are going to find out the sign of work done from a pv diagram now let's say our gas let's consider a gas which is in the initial state as represented in this pv diagram now let us observe this picture if the gas is being compressed that is if we push the piston downwards the gas gets compressed that means the volume decreases the volume decreases then we can say that the state here the state 
shifts towards the left towards the smaller volumes then we can conclude that positive work w is being done on the gas similarly consider the picture here here what is happening the gas is allowed to expand that means we are pushing the piston upwards the gas gets expanded the volume increases the state here the path of the state is moving towards the right implies the volume is getting increased and the negative work is being done on the gas so we can conclude this like this if the path of the pv diagram is directed towards the left implies volume is decreasing and positive work is being done on the gas so if we are given a picture like this from this picture we can clearly say that the path on the pv diagram is directed towards the left implies volume is decreasing and positive work is being done on the gas similarly if the path on the pv diagram is directed towards the right the volume is increasing and negative work is being done on the gas so this is the way of determining the sign of work done from the pv diagram which is very useful in doing the problems next how we how we can determine the sign of delta u from a pv diagram we know that u represents the internal energy in the previous slides or in the previous uh, introduction to thermodynamics we have already explained that we cannot uh, internal energy is a state parameter which is the total energy which is hidden in the system it is not apparently shown by the system we can calculate the change in internal energy but not the internal energy we know that internal energy and the temperature are proportional to each other that is u is proportional to t also pv is proportional to t this implies that u is proportional to t is proportional to pv that means if the quantity pv increases then the temperature t and internal energy u must also increase this is represented in the diagram here this means any time if the state in a pv diagram this is the state in the pv diagram if it ends up further right further up and right where we started then we can say that delta u is positive delta u is positive that is change in internal energy is positive similarly any time if the state in a pv diagram ends up further down and left from where we started then delta u is a negative number so it's clear if the state in a pv diagram ends up further right further up and right from where we started then we can say delta u as positive if the state in a pv diagram ends up further down and left where it started we can say delta u to be negative now suppose if the state in pv diagram moves up and left or if the state in a pv diagram moves down or right then we will be in a state of confusion or it will be a little ambiguous whether the quantity pv is exactly increased or decreased to make it sure one should check the exact value of initial and final pressures and volumes on the axis of the graph to tell if the quantity pv is exactly increased or decreased so by this method we can conveniently determine the sign of delta u from a pv diagram now let's see how we can determine the sign of q from a pv diagram we know that according to first law of thermodynamics delta u is equal to q plus w or q is equal to delta u minus w now we will see how to calculate the sign of q that is the quantity of heat amount of heat from a pv diagram if the change in internal energy is positive and the work done is negative this is positive and this is negative then what happens q will be positive that is the net heat will be positive which makes sense 
since if the internal energy increased even though work was done by the gas that implies more heat must have entered into the gas than the energy lost due the due to the work done by the gas similarly if the internal energy decreases here if the internal energy decreases and the work done is positive then what happens to, to q q becomes negative that is net heat must be negative this also makes sense since if the internal energy decreased even though the work was done on the gas that implies more heat must have left the gas than energy gained by the gas from work being done on it so by this method we can determine the sign of q from a pv diagram so till now we have seen some of the uh, uh, applications of the pv diagram now let's put all of them in this slide so an indicator diagram can be used to represent the changes in pressure and volume of a gas or a system we can find out the direction of the change that is the direction in which the process is taking place whether it is in the forward direction or backward direction we can also identify whether a process is an expansion process or compression process we can identify whether it is an isothermal process or adiabatic process we can also calculate the work done in a process when we are able to calculate the work done we can naturally find out the efficiency of any engine now let's conclude the indicator diagram or pv diagram is widely used in calculating the work done in the process of expansion or compression it is found more useful in processes where relationship between p and v is not known the work done on the system increases its energy and work done by the system reduces it we may conclude the work done by or on the system depends on the path that is the work does not depend on the initial and the final states hope you have understood the concept of indicator diagram or pv diagram thank you